Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Well here we are once again on our 2024 world tour and we are getting closer to my home in Canada. Basically our neighbors to the south right here in the United States of America. All right so what kind of car will I show you from the USA? Well let's check out this great 1937 Chevrolet Salt Shaker. This is the 37 Chevy Bonneville Racer, but you can also build this stock or custom. Check it out. Getting into the shadows. <laughs> but anyway, this is a great model car kit. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. And now race fans, let's go back to the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah with this amazing 1937 Chevy Salt Shaker Bonneville Racer. This is a Retro Deluxe kit with the special features loaded with extra parts, pad printed red line slicks, expanded decal sheet, and vintage packaging. AMT has chosen to reproduce the 1979 box top on this model. However, the first release came out in 1968 and looked like this. This model kit was issued over the years in many different styles and you could build the model car a number of ways from each of the different versions. Stock, street rod, custom, drag, or the Bonneville Racer. Let's see if those parts still exist in this version. On this side of the box we read, Ready for the flying mile over Utah's world famous Bonneville Salt Flats. Salt Shaker is super tuned for all out top speed with a streamlined and lowered front end housing a blown fuel injected big block Chevy engine. Fun to assemble 125th scale hobby kit for modelers 10 years through adulthood. Photo of original prototype model. Finish your model as shown with paint from your local hobby dealer. So here we can see a look at the decals. This is a number 67 AS or AGS a gasser type car and uh, there's our Sponsors here, Iski Cams, Champion, Simpson, Mallory, Firestone, Krager, and Moon Eyes. And it is painted in a yellow Moon Eyes uh, paint color. <laughs> and then we have the stripe going up here, as well as these wonderful mag wheels. And you can see the headers coming down below. The fenders have been removed and are filled in. And it does have a little hood scoop up top. On this side of the box we get a look at some of the features of this kit and here we have the supercharged Chevy 427 V8 and you can see the wonderful blower up here with that big belt drive as well as our headers out the end and then we have the special deep oil pan here that's even finned as well as the front timing chain water pump cover which is also finned and we've got finned valve covers. Now here we have a tuck and roll custom instrument panel and dashboard. The panel isn't tuck and rolled, but the uh, dashboard is. And then we've got the matching tuck and roll racing bucket seats and these wonderful Krager SS mag wheels. Here is a suggestion for painting your model. Use only paints made for styrene plastic models. You can create your own color scheme or follow the box lid photographs. For additional color detailing, refer to the instruction sheet. The following paint colors are suggested to duplicate the box lid photographs. Exterior, yellow and flat black. Interior, gloss black, semi-gloss black, and chrome, bright silver. Chassis, gloss black, and semi-gloss black. And the engine should be Chevy orange. Flipping to the bottom of the box, we can see an exploded view of all the parts here. And it does look like there are a lot of parts, so maybe we might just luck out and be able to build some of the earlier versions of this kit. Here's a little image of the side of the car. This is for ages 10 and up, skill level 2. And I think this is more of a, mo a highly moderate to even an advanced skill level 2. So keep that in mind. Here is an image of the decal sheet, and they did say that it, they expanded it. You can see all these different numbers, 67, 9 in a circle, as well as 80, 4, and 11, or two ones, I guess. And remember, you can always cut these into combinations. You could do a 76 instead of 67 just by cutting them out and moving them around. We also have 12s here. 
So you could keep these for other race cars. There's additional stripes added in, it looks like. It's going to be lots of fun to see this in color, what they've done. But yeah, look at all these parts. And they must be over about 110. Now before we actually lift the lid off this kit, I just want to take a little nostalgic trip back and show you the version of this that was in the hobby shops when I was a kid and was pretty much everywhere for about at least a decade, I think that same box art, and I kind of wish I had picked one up back in the day, but I didn't. I got the coupe version instead. And they made one that was a, not a coupe, a roadster. So it had the top off, and then down here it had the convertible boot, and it also came with a upped top. So here is the one version of the coupe that you used to see all the time back in the day. All right, so now let's take the lid off this box and see what's inside. I am anxious because I always wanted to get the coupe. And what do we have? We have the full-on chrome parts tree. And this is really cool. Look at those. It's interesting. That's like a completely blank wheel insert. <laughs> wonder what was going on there. Is there hubcaps underneath or something? No, I don't know. That is odd. I don't ever remember that before. But then you've got these uh, Kragers on this side. And there's two chrome trees, as you see as I'm turning them over. So a lot of the custom parts are still in here from before. So we'll take a look at that with the instruction sheet sort of thing later on. Here we've got our clear components. Interesting they didn't throw in a tinted piece of glass. Usually AMT has been doing that recently. But still pretty good. Here we've got a set of... Oh! They brought back the two-piece tires, as well as solid tires. Oh, and they put the red line on the solid ones. Okay, that's good. Didn't put them on the two-piece. Well, the two-piece are actually really cool-looking firestones. We'll take a look at that toward the end. Then we've got the stock tires, factory stock tires. Okay, and we've got our body in a bag, our body bag. <laughs> the interior is in there as well, and that is a tub type interior. Then we have this big bag full of all these different parts and components. With another bag. Oh, and it looks like the white plastic is turning yellow in here. So we will have to paint that. That's all right. Don't really want a white plastic model, but overall looking good. Got the metal axle down there. Now we do have the instructions, and these look like the reproduction from the 1979 version. Now I've been looking at instructions on scale mates for all the versions. Ooh, look at this decal sheet. Fills the entire bottom of the box. So what I'm going to do is show this at the end of the video. I'll take off the yellow paper, and then we can see exactly what this looks like. So I'm going to do something a little bit different with the instruction reveal. I will show the ones that come in the box here, and then I'm going to show some from other editions so that you guys get an idea of alternate versions of building this kit based on all the parts that are in here. So we'll kind of go over that and make this more of a mega review of this salt shaker model so that anyone interested in building it as not the salt shaker, like me, who wants to build this factory stock, you can have all the instructions to it. And I won't really cover the instructions in depth, but I'll show you what they look like. Here we have the instruction sheet for the salt shaker, and you can see a nice side profile of the model, just like on the box side. And then we have our important read these points before you begin. So basically, if we open this up a little bit and move it here, just like so, you can see it's got number one, test fit all parts before sminting, two, smit all parts unless otherwise indicated, Three, use paints and cement made for styrene plastic. Paint all sub-assemblies before attaching chrome parts. Scrape chrome and paint away from surfaces to be cemented together. And follow all the numbers on the instruction sheet beginning with number one. 
So down here we've got tools. There's tweezers, a knife, paintbrush, and a toothpick for cement. A paintbrush for paint. <laughs> you know. And then tape and rubber band to hold small parts together. And then we have our paint chart down here. Maybe what I'll do is, there's a lot on here. Let's just zoom in the camera. Okay. Whoops. Behave. All right, so we've got paint colors. Black, flat black, semi-gloss black, white, flat white, silver, chrome, bright silver, aluminum, steel, brass, gold, amber, transparent amber, red, transparent red, orange, yellow, tan, brown, light blue, medium blue, dark blue, transparent blue, light green, dark green, gray, Chevy orange, interior color, body color, and then the the filled-in triangle is semi-gloss, the open triangle is gloss, and the half full, half empty triangle is metallic. See box art for additional painting instructions. It is recommended that you search the internet for additional color references and details. And then you got GM Ford and Firestone. Why Ford? <laughs> Does it say? It doesn't really say. Okay, that's interesting. But I guess they had to get those licenses. Where would it be Ford? All right, let's take a look at the next page. Here we have our engine, and after we take a look at this, I'll show you the other instruction sheet that includes the factory stock and the old school custom Chevy straight six, inline six. So here we have our engine. So starting with number one, we've got our engine block halves gluing together. Then our chrome oil pan will go up underneath. Now remember to paint the plastic colored parts and scrape the edges of your chrome and where there's any paint on the block and then it'll glue on and stay on. So then we have our two cylinder heads left and right hand side. They're not showing the opposite side here. Our two finned valve covers go down and then we have the injection manifold followed by the blower. Now this is just the center of the blower and then I think our ends would glue on. Okay. Anyway, we got our magneto, our injector scoop, our front engine cover, the pulley system, the fuel pump, and that goes into that hole there. And then our starter motor, which glues on the opposite side of the engine block, about here somewhere. And then we have our headers, left and right hand side, and then the collectors on the bottom for 14 steps. Now let's just take a look at the image for the straight six stock version, as well as the custom one with the chrome valve covers and whatnot. Now here we have the wheels, and there is a little bit of an interesting note here, which we'll get to in a second. So we have the front Krager mags going into those two narrow Firestone tires, and then there is a rear wheel insert that would you know, push in the back and then glue on the outer edge of our chrome mag wheels. Now remember to scrape the chrome where it's going to contact, right? And you got A, so I think that was flat black, if I remember right. Oh, maybe that's the inner wheel, that funny one. Okay, anyway. Oh, there's spacers here for this. Now, this is the interesting part. There is a two-piece drag slick, and that's what I showed coming out of the box there. But you can also add in, as an option, the one-piece rear slick, which I find is a better tire anyway. But same thing, you sandwich these wheels together. Now let's take a look at how the other wheels went in other kits looking at the older instructions. Now we have the chassis assembly, and this is only showing the parts for the Bonneville Racer. And it's kind of clever what they've done, because when you take a look at the instructions that I'll show next, which show the stock version going together, the other instructions are a combination of the stock one going together with the drag racing parts. So this is actually kind of good in a way, because it shows trim off the shaded areas. So here you've got your rear bumper mounts being removed. The running board's being cut off, so you can get the frame rails, you know, right to the edge of the body, without the running boards sticking out the sides. And then it also shows the front 
horns here for your bumper being cut off. So that's interesting. And then you've got your rear inner panels because I don't... Oh yeah, the rear fenders are going on. But these are filler panels anyway. Okay, so you've got your lowered axle here. You've got your steering arm, tie rods, front leaf springs. Interesting they don't show the shock absorbers. Uh, radiator, and it says trim off this pin here. But I do believe that is going to be on the stock version. And then we've got a drive shaft, our rear axle in two pieces. We have these traction bars that go on, rear shock absorbers. And then we have a drag link and the little arm. And that goes onto the frame in here somewhere. And then, did I say drive shaft? But we do have one that goes to the transmission from the rear axle. Next up we have the interior, and this is kind of an interesting interior because it's a combination of the custom version as well as our Bonneville racer. Because here you have this rear area, and it's all been tuck and rolled. And now that is not factory stock, that is a custom thing. Then you've got your bucket seats, which also include the tuck and roll, and the dashboard, which includes the tuck and roll. Now this is the custom dashboard, and I'll show you the stock interior assembly from other instruction sheets in a minute here, but you'll notice that there is a stock dashboard as well. Then you have all these gauges, which kind of look like they got pirated out of a, you know, like 1968 something. <laughs> anyway, like more of a bigger Tornado or some kind of Ford or something like that. And you got your steering column, your steering wheel, which is on the chrome parts trees, and then your gear shift and the gear shift uh, ball on the top. Well, it's all one piece. And you've got a tub style interior with the door panels molded on the sides. You also have these shoulder harnesses and a cool looking roll bar. Next we have the body construction assembly and of course here's our one piece body. Now it shows these two front fender panels going into place and they would glue on the inside of the fender arch and we also have our rear fenders being glued on here and it does say to trim this back so you can get those big tires in and our windshield is molded as one bubble but it says note scored lines for optional trimming out of door glass so you can actually cut it out back here and remove that so it's just the window in the back and the little no draft window then we have our assembled interior going up into place and we've got a windshield divider in here as well as two radiator brace rods and they would go on either side of the radiator and come up into here and here and now we can look at the other instructions and see how they assemble the body Now flipping this over to the back, we have our final assemblies, and again, this is just for the Bonneville. So here we have the trunk handle, chrome, and it's optional, you don't need to put it in there. We have our gas cap right there, and then we've got our hood scoop and the two-piece hood, which has to be glued up the center. And it does say to trim off the shaded area for the hood scoop. Well, that would be for the blower to stick through right there, and then the hood scoop would cover over top of the blower. Then we have our grill filler panel, which goes up into here, and the front bumper, which is chrome and optional. And I do believe, no, you don't need the horns on there, so they would be cut off, but they glue onto the blocks here and here. And this would be more like a, no, and that would be in the back. I was thinking like the push bar bumper to push it out onto the Bonneville salt flats, but that would be in the rear, because usually they had a truck behind there pushing it out. Anyway. And then you got your two door handles left and right, and those are chrome. All right. Here we have the body for our 1936 Chevrolet, and it does still look pretty good considering how long this has been in the mold process for. 
you know, being continually pumped out since 1968, there is a brace up here in the front, and that is to prevent distortion as it's coming out of the mold, but you will need to remove that brace. There is also a great big piece of flash right there. In fact, the flash is pretty heavy on the kit. You can see it right there along the edges where the fenders go and up underneath the body. Turning it over, we can see some heavy mold marks up in the roof, right in there and there. And I know it's hard to see, but there is a dome light right in this area here between the writing, which was a pretty crummy spot for a stamp to go to. They should have actually put it up here in the trunk lid on the opposite side. Overall, though, I think it's held up pretty well. There is a firewall that's molded in place right into the body, but that's not too bad. Now, you could leave that center pillar out of the windshield and have it as a custom with the wraparound glass, or V-butted, as it would have been. But overall, not bad. I mean, a bit of sandpaper should clean all this up. Now there is something cool that I noticed with the Chevy brochures at the time, and you could actually adapt it into your kit if you have one of the Cabriolet models or the uh, Roadster from 37. Now if you leave the spare tire off the Roadster, you could actually add it on to this body style. So first off, we have an image of the standard 37 Chevy uh, Businessman Coupe. And then followed up by the rumble seat version, and that's what I was talking about with if you have the cabriolet. And you could easily mount that spare tire onto the back right here. So here's what the rumble seat roadster looks like. All right, so now you see what I'm talking about with the spare tire going in the back. The only thing you would really need to alter in that case is if you have both kits at the same time, the uh, coupe and the Roadster, you would have to measure up from the bottom of the trunk lid, I guess, and figure out where the rumble seat comes in on the Roadster, and then scribe that line into here, and then use putty and fill out the trunk panel line. Smooth it all out, and then you would have the rumble seat version of the coupe, which would be really cool. But like my uncle said, the rumble seat coupes were not very good, because with the cabriolet style, with the roof gone, the people in the back sitting in the rumble seat could talk to the driver. But with the coupe, all you can see is this rear window, and nobody can talk to the driver because that's all enclosed. But at any rate, the rumble seat did make it so you could carry four passengers. Next up, we have the interior tub. And you can see that it does have that tuck and roll pattern molded onto the back package shelf which carries on down to the floorboards. And then you've got the two little holes for your roll bar. On the sides, the panels do include the window winders, as well as the no draft window winder right up in here. We have our floor pe or pedals mounted in on the floor. It's interesting that uh, this piece of the transmission hump the gas pedal is right behind there, so your foot is actually going up on here instead of flat to the floor. There is a hole here, and you will have to glue your gear shift lever basically to the transmission and then weave the lever up through the hole, like that sort of thing. So, kind of complicated, but not really. There are also some holes here that are blanked over on this side, but I do believe you drill those out for your gear shift levers and whatnot for the factory stock version. We'll have to look at those instructions again just to see how it is. The floor has a nice texture in here and very tiny mold marks just by the uh, roll bar mounts and I Oh yeah, I do see one there, and I guess one in here. But they are so tiny, they should be able to come out easily with that number 16 hobby blade. But again, very nicely done, considering this was all created in 1968. The body to interior fit is very nice in here. 
So not really any hassle going on just to assemble it. It will sit up a little bit inside the body until you get everything located, like your dashboard and whatnot. But overall, it will look good once completed. Our next parts tree includes the chassis with our running boards molded in place, as well as inner fender aprons and the drive shaft right here. You can see it's a very short looking drive shaft. Bringing this up to the camera, you can see there's a lot of uh, junk in the actual plastic here which is kind of interesting, but uh, overall you've got some nice detail in the back and you've got 37 Chevy used under license right there, so you might want to remove that writing if you can see it. I like how they have all these big rivets in here, that's kind of interesting. On the opposite side there is some nice texture on the running boards in there but overall, this is quite smooth. Looks like an open girder construction on the frame. Now here we've got some sort of panel lines going right in here on the inner fenders. They say to take your knife and cut these out, and that allows those great big headers to slip through. There are some mold marks on them as well, which need to be addressed. But overall, I think this is not bad considering how simple it was and that the mold comes from 1968. Our next two parts trees includes quite a bit of different items. We have our front wheels here with the little bearing caps up front, as well as the rear wheels that do not have the bearing caps. So keep that in mind when you're putting wheels together if you don't use the hubcaps. We have these interesting wheel backs. There's our racing harness, basically our, our four-point seat belt. Then we have our roll bar, and it looks like mine's a little bit warped down here, as well as the roll bar support, shock absorbers. We have these great big traction bars. There's our little tiny hood scoop. Front or rear fenders right there. And this is a blank out panel for the interior if you want to hide the tuck and roll. Then right here, sorry, we've got the blank for the grill. And that's just a filler panel for the Bonneville to make it more streamlined. Then we have the front fenders for the stock and street rod kind of versions, if you plan to use those. Now, the detail on those wheels is really nice. You get the wheel bolts in there. There you go. As well as the little raised parts in between the wheel bolts and your grease caps. Oh, these are brake backing plates for the rear axle, that, or differential. Well, same thing. That's what's going on there. Actually, yeah, the differential is the pumpkin in the middle. But at any rate, we have mold marks inside these fenders and behind there. Don't think it matters here, but definitely in the fenders, because you don't want to flip the model upside down and everyone can see the mold marks. Over on this part's tree, Again, the traction bars are really beefy looking and have that girder construction in there, as well as little links up at the front. Here you can see the perforated mark for cutting out on your rear fenders to allow the bigger slicks to fit in if you want to use those. And again, we've got mold marks inside and on the back package shelf, so you want to remove those in order for this to sit flat. But overall, again, Simplistic parts, good skill level to moderate to maybe advanced kit, and uh, very easy to put together. Our next two parts trees are rather interesting. This one looks like an additional one that came in the kit just for the salt shaker. It even has Chevy SS on here. So what we have is the dropped axle to get this lower into the ground. We also have these, which I believe are the front fender aprons for blanking it out as well as these ones in the rear. So again, quite interesting. And then in here we've got these lowered altered springs, and that would be to drop the front axle even lower for the Bonneville. Now here we have another universal parts tree. This is also in the cabaret kit, because I have that cabirolet kit. <laughs> There's the tuck and roll custom dashboard. We have the stock steering wheel. 
We also have those hood bars, or um, yeah, the ones that go from the firewall to the radiator. So I guess our radiator support bars. Now here's the stock gear shift as well as the parking brake lever. We have the battery. Now this is from the bottom side. And we also have those headlight buckets. And then here we've got our stock hood. And as you can see, it's split in half, so you have to glue it together. Now turning the parts over, there are mold marks in here, which need to be addressed. These parts are basically smooth on this parts tree, so we'll just put that to the side. But over here you can see there's a little indentation for cutting out the hood scoop. There's also some on the sides, and you will have to remove the sides if you want to use the dragster type of engine. There is little hand grips around the steering wheel. And then that tuck and roll is really interesting, isn't it? Quite uh, pleated in there. Very nicely done. Probably be safer with the tuck and roll on there than the original, which was a metal dashboard. But overall, I mean, not bad. Again, molded in 1968. On this parts tree, we have the stock bench seat. And what would be really cool to do on this is I've got this cool Ken's Custom Fuzzy Fur, and it's a sort of brown color. And this would be awesome for adding mohair onto this seat. Just paint it with a tester's tan color that's like this and then sprinkle it on and blow it off or shake it off and you would have a nice looking mohair interior. Now we have our stock dashboard. There's the rear axle with the differential and the springs molded in place as well as our exhaust pipe and our radiator and a couple of goodies over here. Looks like our tail lights and whatnot. So again, check out the pattern on that seat. Really neat. Buttons going down on these straps. The stock dashboard you can see is cool. It's got the instrument panel as well as I do believe a radio like speaker or a vent here. Maybe fresh air. And then we've got our glove box. That differential is really big on that thing. <laughs> Pretty cool. On the back there are some mold marks, but once you glue everything together on this, they're all concealed, so that's not bad. A little bit of uh, area for the seat to glue together on there. Overall, I think it looks pretty cool. On this parts tree, we have our factory stock Stove Bolt 6 Chevy motor, and you can see all the great components there. Engine block left and right. The stock valve cover as well as stock oil pan intake and exhaust manifolds and timing chain cover we also have the custom seats or the racing seats in here that also have that tuck and roll to match everything here's our two-piece air cleaner and that also included oil in the air cleaner overall though i mean take a look at the detail on there pretty nice pretty pretty nice and then the back has a texture on these seats that is sort of reminiscent of fiberglass so that would be the fiberglass matting and whatnot again fiberglass seats in the custom are lighter than the steel seats and still offer a rigid support really cool again and awesome for drag racing and speaking of drag racing here's that big chevy motor you can see the awesome belt here for the blower and our manifold, as well as the cylinder heads. And if you notice on the cylinder heads, they do have the rockers for the valves. Again, not bad. Details a bit soft on there, but that's okay. Now going on over to this part of the parts tree, you can see we've got a longer drive shaft here, and we also have our license plates the springs with the old knuckle style shock absorbers on them and then we've got our linkages and our stock chevy axle as well as the tie rods here and the drag links so again quite a bit of parts but nothing too bad little sink mark on the starter motor which you can easily fill with some putty overall decent our final little white parts tree includes the cover for the cabriolet and these really interesting looking lake pipes. 
that have this texture pattern on them, almost like a corkscrew. And then you can see the dual pipes popping out. Now, you can really tell there's a lot of flash on this. So a little cleanup with your hobby knife will be fine. Interestingly, there's no mold marks on the underside of this or on the top. So that's a really nice uh, downed boot. You could probably use that on a couple of other models as well. Maybe on a 40 Ford on the coupe, cut the roof off on it or something, make it a convertible and use that. Overall, not bad for the vintage and for what it is. Here we have our first chrome parts tree. Remember, there's two in this kit. And you can see there are a lot of elements in here. You have two grills, this one being the stock version and this one being the custom. And we've got headlight bezels, wheel backs. We've got a manifold for turning these six into, you know, basically four exhaust pipes coming out the end. We've got our stock hubcaps on here, Krager mag wheels, special chrome bumperettes. Then we've got two versions of the chrome bumpers. One of them, I think, is supposed to be the standard bumper and the other is more of a deluxe. We also have the front wraparound bumpers. These are duals, which is pretty cool. Look at the nice detail in there. The chrome tree is where it really shines. <laughs> no pun intended. Actually, you get six exhausts coming out of here if you put these together properly. Look at that custom steering wheel. That's pretty cool. You could use that on anything from the 70s, basically. There's the other drag racing springs. This actually raises the front axle for that, um, you know, drag race look where they have the manifolds popping out the sides. You can see the custom grills going across. Keep that in mind for the other parts tree. And this one's going up and down, the stock version. This is still interesting to me. <laughs> These wheel backs or whatever they are. So flipping this over. See, there's there's none of this going on here. So, again, what is that? Some remnant from maybe one of the early, early editions? I don't know. Back of the steering wheel has the finger grabs in there. Again, really cool. Chrome tree is actually the nicest of them all. And, oh, there's our little blower. What's sort of sad about the blower is it doesn't have the three holes in there for the flaps that open. But I guess that's all right for what you get. Let's take a look at our other chrome tree. Our second chrome tree is a little bit smaller and this is interesting because you get four hubcaps there. So just take a look at the other chrome tree. Oh, okay. So that fifth one here is for the missing spare tire, which goes on the cabriolet. So that one is a universal uh, chrome tree. Now this bit here goes on the back, and that is our rear taillight grill sort of thing for one of the customs. Here is the chrome valve cover if you're going to do the custom straight six, as well as the intake manifold with the dual carbs, dual single carbs. So much like the uh, Hudson Hornet motor, the twin H. Again, the other parts of the Kragers, there's the instrument panel. And I had a thought this might also be from like a 1963 Chevy pickup truck. Anyway, you get a nice bow tie here. It says stove bolts, which would be a club plaque, I think. Then we also have a rear view mirror. Those are the door handles. Again, though, really clean on here and looks really nice. Flipping it over. Yeah, there's some mold marks underneath, but I think they're all behind everything, except for maybe on the mirror you're going to see that, because that's actually on the the chrome surface of the mirror, the reflective area. But again, overall, I mean, this is really nice. There's even some writing on here. Looks like it says Offenhauer, something like that. But again, nice chrome for the vintage of the kit, and actually really the best part of the kit. Here we have our transparent pieces, and we've got two clear parts as well as this tinted red rear taillight. Now what we have is our stock front headlights. Then we have these Lucas lights as well. A nice clear hood. This is for the custom version and the show version actually. So you can see the engine through the hood. Then we have our window glass and you will, or you might want to remove these. I don't know if it's necessary or not. 
and then our red tail light panel. So bringing this up to the camera, you can see the cross hatching in the stock headlights and the little hole for the Lucas because there's supposed to be a little pin that sticks through. I think the Lucas were basically a light that reflected backwards into the headlight bezel and then the you know backward reflection would hit the chrome dome in the bezel and then shoot the light outward forward. Overall the clear hood is quite nice. A bit of flash on the bottom, got to clean that up. And then here it's supposed to have some indentation. You can almost see a little line in here on the glass there and there and that was the area that you're supposed to cut out if you want these side windows open. But I'd almost suggest just leaving this as it is because then the dust won't get into your seating area or the cockpit or whatever you want to call that. And then here we have our taillight panel. Unfortunately there's two mold marks right in the center. You can see them. If I turn it over you can really see where they are. And that kind of... Oh no, it doesn't take away from the bars. Okay, that's nice. But this panel is supposed to actually go in there on your chrome parts tree and give you the nice reflector. And boy that does look nice, doesn't it? <laughs> or you could leave it off and just paint this uh, as a grill in the back instead. But I kind of like this big long Tron style, maybe Battlestar Galactica kind of uh, tail lamp going on. Overall though, the clear parts are quite nice. They are all in separate bags so they won't get scratched, which is always a good thing. Next up we have our tires, which are a combination of Firestones and some Goodyears. And these ones are actually two-piece tires. And th that's a very old idea and not a very good one because these are not rubber, these are hard plastic. But they are a cool tire. They got the Firestone writing right up there as well as the cross checkered flags. And the idea of these tires is that they go together like this. There we go. And there's a seam line up the middle. So most people crazy glue these together and then get rid of the seam line because this I don't think is actually polystyrene plastic. I think it's something different. But of course you could always test your tester's liquid glue around there and see if it will work. Anyway, there's one. Now it's stuck together. And then here we've got the Goodyear and you can see the nice little red line that's in there. That's a nice touch. These are brand new tires. Actually, they don't even say Goodyear, but they are Blue Streak Specials over on this side. So they are Goodyears. It's just the Goodyear logo is gone, which is interesting. Maybe round two couldn't get it for that one. I do like the new Firestone tires that they have. And these ones actually do say Firestone and have the little thing down below on one side and nothing on the other. So if you did want to turn them around and have them as like Allstate tires or something like that, or Atlas tires or whatever, then you could. Overall though, the tires are really cool in this kit. It's just a matter of putting them on your car. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the reveal of our decal sheet. And this thing is huge. <laughs> you can see it fits full frame. So there it is. Wow, look at all these cool new numbers and everything we've got and all the little sponsor decals and everything else. Consolidation decals, I guess. Number 67, number 80, 4 and 11 in white. So red, yellow, white. Look at these big numbers in the circles. You got 9s and 12s. You got two different salt shakers, one in yellow and one in white. King's cams. Now, whoa, so these are actually new decals. Well, not really new, but ones I haven't seen before. There's the AGS in white. We've got Gabriel right here. Salt shaker for the trunk lid. There's AGS in black. So you could actually have a light colored car or a dark colored car. We also have some racing stripes on here, which is nice. Genuine Chevrolet parts, which could also go on vintage racers as well. Isky cams, STP, Torco motor oil. That's a new one to me. Being in Canada, I don't know what that is. Valvoline, competition proven parts, Grant. Um, too small for me to read, but looks like a Chevy 
kind of thing. MH, those would be drag slicks. Got dynamite here. AMTNT. I guess it's supposed to be AMT dynamite. Firestone. Is that Eagle? Engel? I guess. Mallory Ignition. Really kind of hard to read that one. Hooker Headers. Oh, this is a automatic transmission thing. Or a transmission thing. B&M Automotive Hydro Stick. And those little guys with some tires. Champion Spark Plugs Pennzoil Chevy Powered 427. Blown 427 Chevy. Krager Moon Eyes Jams. Something like that. Simpsons. And then this looks like American racing equipment. Winds. Weber carburetors. AC Delco. Again, really some cool looking decals which you could use on many things. That's funny. There's no. Uh, there's one hooker header here. Oh, there's the other one way over there. Same with the Jans. So really nice stuff. Man, I... <laughs> Too bad I'm building it factory stock. This would be really cool to build a racer. Maybe I'll have to buy another one. There goes all my money. There's my allowance for the week, guys. <laughs> anyway, again, lots of neat stuff here. Stuff you can use on a lot of models. And uh, I really encourage you to use your imagination and build it the way you want to build it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great video where we got to unbox the 1937 Chevrolet Bonneville Racer, the Salt Shaker. Now, which way would you build this? Stock, custom, or drag? Let us know down in those great comments below because I want to know how many people want to build it of each of these different versions. Because basically all I'm seeing on YouTube is the drag racing version. I'm going to build mine stock because I have the Cabriolet and the Coupe would be a great addition to that. So if you really dig these great unboxing videos, why not consider clicking the subscribe button and click the bell notifications and especially the one on your phone so that when I release a new video, it goes bzz, bzz, and you go, ooh, look at my phone's vibrating. What's on here? Oh, it's a unboxing video or a, you know, um, model car show and tell video or maybe a tips and text video from monster hobbies model car garage i better take a look at that and then you look at it and you go that was cool and you click that like button and show us some support through likes and you can even leave a comment i won't mind in fact i enjoy comments how about you if you're a youtube content creator do you like getting comments i think you do come on <laughs> admit it anyway now, if you are a subscriber and you've already turned on the bell notifications and you've been a subscriber for a while, have you ever considered maybe becoming a member? Now, membership gives you some extra perks for only $2 a month, or two bucks as you'd say in the US. So for two bucks, you actually get your name scrolling up at the end of the credits like these people here. Now, unfortunately, you got red, white, and blue, so the names are probably getting a little bit messed up as this scrolls up. But at any rate, so you get your name at the end of the video. When you're like, when we're, when I've got one of those preview videos that come up, you know, every now and again on my channel, there's a, like a little chat box up top. And if you're sitting on your computer, you can actually chat along or your phone, I guess you can text something and it'll come up in the chat box. So now normally you get the regular emojis like the happy smiley face and all that stuff, right? The circular one. But if you're a Monster Hobbies member, I've made four special emojis that are really cool. They're based on a little character called Peter, based off Peter Laurie. And it's a purple monster with little spiky heads. And if you go into our community tab, sometimes I'll leave a comment and show a picture of Peter. So you actually get to use those little Peter uh, emojis that I created in that chat box. So that's cool. And as the ultimate, YouTube has released a new special feature for members. Now, normally every Friday I'll release a video, right? So that's for everybody to see, subscribers, non-subscribers, whatever. But as a member, you get to see that video like days, weeks, even months before because the moment I upload it, I can set it so it'll go into a special spot for members only. So you get the sneak peek and you get to see everything way before. It's like a secret club, eh? Woo! Anyway, um, so yeah. 
you get to see that video before the subscribers get the notification for it. And if you miss the video, well, you still get the notification because you clicked on those things anyway. So you would see it on that Friday. But that is the cool bit of becoming a member. Plus, you also know that by supporting me each month with the simple $2, whatever it is, that uh, you can help me get some more model kits or paints, glue, accessories, whatever I need to build some of these model kits, which I should be doing because I got a whole bunch. And uh, your little two bucks a month actually goes into that, to supporting the channel. Maybe I need some new lights. Like maybe this light sucks <laughs> or something and I need a new one. Or even a light bulb for that matter. Well, that little bit building up with everybody, that'll help me get some new stuff. So anyway, do what you guys like. Become a subscriber, become a member, whatever. I appreciate it all. And... Uh, if you want to check out a video, if you don't want to be a subscriber or whatever, or anybody can check this out, just click here and you'll see another great model car kit that I unbox. And if you want to buy some models from us online and have it shipped out from our place to yours, whatever, we can talk shipping with that. Anyway, click this icon down here and it'll take you directly to our website, www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everybody, happy model building. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.